So, on this topic of moments with mirth, we're going to get into the type of men to avoid in a relationship. Yay! Wee! Because there are many types, but there I'm going to focus on four. We're going to focus on a good four. So, <clears throat> those four, we're going to start with the disrespectful type. The disrespectful type is self-explanatory. You don't want a guy who is disrespectful anyway. Like, that's just, it's unacceptable. And I think that anyone who goes for this, you just shouldn't go for it. <laughs> we're just going to say that. You should definitely not go for it. It's not acceptable. Because, like, when a dude is disrespectful, like, in this instance, we're talking about someone who doesn't respect your wishes. You know, things that you ask him to do, things that you ask him constantly to do. You know, you want him to change. You want him to do better. Or you have, like, your own morals. And they don't, they don't really believe in that. Like, those um, who want to be, like, celibate. But that male does not want you to be celibate. Like, that person is not good because they're not respecting your wishes. You know, these are things that you live by. These are, like, your values and beliefs. And if they're going against that, cut them off, to be honest. Also, if they just don't respect you as an individual, like, it irritates me. It really hurts me, like, when I see, you know, women get bad-mouthed or, you know, they're getting yelled at, they get cussed around. Like, they're being, like, very unappreciated. And, like, that's that's really upsetting. Like, you shouldn't go for a male who really is, like, all out just disrespecting you. That That's not okay. Because, like, when they're doing it in multiple ways where, in a sense, it's, you know, it's violence. You know, like, they're, they're being not considerate of your feelings. They're not being considerate of you as an individual. And you can you can see the way they're treating you just based, based upon, like, how you know that you need to be treated and want to be treated versus what they're giving you. So, disrespectful. If you see it, if you feel it, Snip, snip, snip. No questions. The next type to avoid. Entitled men. The ones who feel that they are entitled, you should automatically leave them alone. Because, like, to me, they, they make, like, the most no sense. You know, what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, those are the ones who spend a lot of money on Gucci shirts. <laughs> they spend money on, you know, expensive clothing items. They spend money that they don't have a lot of times on like cars and trips just to showcase that you know they're doing something they out that they're out here whatever who cares but for those who you know spend a lot of money on let's just say you know clothing and stuff and then they feel like oh well I spent this money now you should talk to me no <laughs> for what or like I spent this money on myself for you to talk to me now you owe me uh no like for what like what did you do and then, like, if somehow they get past the, you know, initial, you know, I spent this money, so we should be friends or we should be something more, then the ones who have that sense of entitlement where they feel like they're owed something for doing what they're supposed to do, like being there for you when you need them, you know, being your, your ears when you just want to, you know, speak. So, like, literally, your uh, in-person diary, you know, they want a pat on the back for taking out the trash. Go do it. Go do it. it was, it's trash. Take it out. Like, things like that. Like, oh, my gosh, babe, I cut the grass. You owe me something. What? What? Cut the grass. Like, who else going to do it? <laughs> She's not going to do it. She's not supposed to go do it. Like, if you're in the house, like, you go do that. Like, it's, it's things of that nature where, like, they're supposed to be a good spouse. You know, they're supposed to be there for you all the time, you know, without question. But because they are there for you, now they feel like they're entitled to you owing them something. And it's like, why am I giving you something before something you're supposed to do? It's like, you know, being at work and you expect a tip for doing your job. It's like, no, I mean, you can get a, a good job, but do your job. This, this, is what, this is what you're paid for, you know? And in and, and this situation, like, you're in a relationship with this person, like, you're with them. They are with you because that's what you're supposed to do as a, a good spouse. So there's nothing more that I need to give you besides my normal routine of loving you and, you know, caring for you. So the guys who have that sense of entitlement where it's like you owe me just because I'm doing something you, I'm supposed to do, snip, snip. Don't waste your time. Next, the emotionally unavailable. So this is the one where, you know, they can't open up. Like this guy 
has a lot of walls up. I don't know what walls he got up. I don't know why are they up. But he has a bunch of walls up. You know, he's not really willing to commit. He's not really, what you want to say, thinking about what y'all can be. He's more so trying to figure out how are you going to play him. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's the one you, you kind of want to snip to. Because you, you kind of going to be wasting your time. Like, why, especially if you're not doing anything, like, why are you spending so many days, so many weeks, so many months trying to convince a person that, you know, that you love them, that you care for them, that you're there for them. But they're not really going for it. They just, they don't see it because they're still thinking about their past. And the thing is, they don't, they don't want to tell you what happened in the past because they feel like you're going to judge them. And, you know, if you're in a relationship and you're trying to make something long term, like open books, that's that's what you guys are. You you audiobooks, open audiobooks, <laughs> because you're verbally going to express, you know, your issues, what happened to you in the past. They're going to do the same thing. So, like, you can't always open up to them and they can't open up to you because they are scared. And you don't want to really live in that, you know, keep trying to open a closed book for weeks and months because you're not going to get anywhere. And you know you're going to get stressed out. You don't want to be stressed out. So if that's an issue, you know, it's something you got to move them on. Uh, and that leads into the ones who can't fully commit because they're not emotionally wrapped. You know, they probably want to be with you, but they don't, they're not sure about it. For some fact is that A, maybe they don't want to be in a relationship anymore because they had had very poor relationships or they don't want to be in a relationship because they just don't believe anything is going to, you know, transpire good, you can say. Especially with our media. Like, you would think that our generation should never be in a relationship. Like, we should all just speed date real life. So, that means we should just date someone for two months and keep it pushing. Because apparently, we can't do long-term relationships. And that sucks, you know? Because, like, that's so annoying. But... <clears throat> If you can't fully commit, then in a sense, you are wasting your time. Like, why are you shelling out, you know, all these events, activities, you know, talking about, trying to talk about lifelong things because you can really see yourself with that person. However, they cannot. And in a sense, it might not be you. It really just may be a relationships in a, in a sense where they want to be, but they're not sure about it. Or they don't want to be and they're sure about it. And that mix-up of trying to make somebody commit when they really don't want to is really going to make you unhappy. And again, you're going to be wasting your time. So, yeah, do not. And then, honestly, they just can't appeal to, you know, like, your request. So it's like where you want them to open up and you want them to commit and you want them to express, you know, basically having the first two topics wrapped into one, uh, basically trying to get to the bottom of it. And if they're not willing to communicate with you, that's just no. See, right there in the, uh, the emotionally unavailable ones are the ones who are fail who fail to communicate. And when they fail to communicate, that is the one that you need to get rid of. Because a relationship without communication is a sinking ship. When you can't be able to effectively talk about, you know, what the problem is, it's like, what is the point? Because you're going to say, what's the point of talking? Well, there is no talking. So what's the point of moving on? That's the point. You're moving on. Because you need to get rid of that person before you kind of drive yourself crazy just trying to make something happen that isn't really, you know, in their mental. So another one, a big one, the non-offerer. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you have encountered this one. Like, you ever meet a guy on one level and you guys are on that level, you know, weeks later, months later, years later. Yeah, that is the non-offerer, you know, because this is the person who came into your life, you know, they kind of made things better or they might have made things more enjoyable. But in a sense, they really didn't. What they did was they met you and you're used to, you know, just friends, but you had somebody who wanted to be around you more often, which is great, you know, but... In a sense, like in the back of our minds, like we always want somebody to add value to our lives. And if they can't really upgrade you, then what are they doing? You know, like they're just they're kind of just there. And that's where a lot of us get stuck at. See, we meet somebody on a level and we don't try to level up ourselves. We stay on that level because we're comfortable with that person. 
you know, we're getting around that person, knowing them a little better, and we're feeling good. And mentally, you know, we're, we're great, but like physically, we're kind of like trapped. So then guess what? Back mentally, we're kind of trapped, but we are in two different type of traps. We're like physically, we're trapped because we're not going anywhere. Mentally, we're trapped because we are enjoying what we're doing, but we're also mentally trapped because we are not allowing ourselves to progress better. And we as in just like people total. So that and that's just like a issue on both ends. Whereas like when you're, you're when you're real comfortable, you don't attend to do something. So a lot of you, my ladies, need to say, hey, I'll be right back. And you know what you're saying? Why are you saying I'm going to be right back? You're saying that you're on this level, which let's just say level five, and you're tired of being on level five because you've been on level five for about mm, two years now. And you trying to get to level seven because that's where your goals are. So you tell them, hey, I'll be right back. And when you get to level seven, because you will get there, you got to have faith in yourself. When you get there, you will understand that they're not trying to do nothing because if they haven't helped you get to level seven or tried to meet you on level seven, then guess what? You continue on from level seven and you leave them at level five and you let them know you are now friends because they're not doing anything for you. Especially for like the the um the ladies who like a man to take control, you know, some females <clears throat> that especially in like in my past, they they like to learn from their man, you know. So I try to make sure all the time that I educate my potential spouse on new topics, or if it's in the same topic, you know, new strategies, new ideas, you know, where let's just say she want to buy a house or she want to get a house. And that's all she know. So we can break down, you know, different styles. We can break down different, you know, square footages, different bedroom sizes, you know, garage, no garage, basement, no basement areas. You know, it's, it's different things that we can continue to dive into because like houses are a lot. <laughs> I tell you about it. It's a lot. But it's, it's so many other things that you can talk about, you know, things that she might not have thought about, like taxes and let's say closing fees. It's just like it's things like that. Where it's just like, oh, I didn't know about this. Oh, I didn't know about that. Oh, what's depreciation? Oh, what's appreciation? It's things that you keep bringing up that's really, you're in the same same area of what you're talking about as far as topics. However, you're adding value because every day she's learning something. Now, ladies, if you are with him and you learn from him and he's becoming more repetitive, then guess what? Now you're kind of getting burnt out. You want to know why? Because you're hearing the same topic. Like, if he's one of the guys who love to preach, you know, loves to be that that spokesperson of the house who just start random talking, like, you know what I thought? You know what I think? I think we all should do better in the world. And you want to know why? Like, if he's one of those people who just random talks, I ain't going to think they, they irritate me. It's just like, okay, man, like, where did you even, where is this even coming from? Like, <laughs> if they're one of those people, it's like, initially it's great because it's like, wow. That's cool. That's good. I understand. However, if he continues to say that, but it's on the same topics and it's almost the exact same language, guess what? He's not learning anymore. He's choosing not to learn anymore. So guess what? You're not learning anymore. So you know what's happening? He's holding you back now. So instead of you being able to progress, grow, get better, guess what? You cannot. Be due to the fact is that you get your learning from him. And he stopped learning. So you stopped learning. So y'all stopped growing. One thing you don't want to do is let a man stop you from growing. And that's honestly one of like, the biggest issues that I personally see is that sometimes like women allow men to dictate like what they what knowledge they acquire, you know. They they kind of skew them to the ideas that they think is okay. However, if a guy really is going to be something for you and with you, he's going to take the time to actually know you. So those are the guys you want to look for. And you want to avoid the ones who really don't take you into consideration. Like if your, if your needs and your wants comes you know, after his, then that's an issue. You want to avoid that. And the thing is what you want to do too, initially to avoid this, is really kind of ask some of the hard questions up front. You know, you want to ask them, you know, what their goals is, what their plans is, what they do for fun. And if they're if they constantly only play games for fun, then 
you know, they got a lot of free time on their hands. Now, just because they play games doesn't mean that you have to cut them off right then and there. You can ask them like, hey, have you ever thought about doing such and such? Or what about doing this? And if they kind of like look puzzled like, what is that? And it's something you care about. Again, you got to cut them off right then and there. <laughs> but what you do is you keep talking about it. But if you see like as time go on and all they want to do is play the game, then it's like, okay, I guess this is all you do. I'm going I'm to come back later, you know? You, you save them for like a little snack, you know? That's the that's the one you put in the cupboard, and then sometimes you find you sometimes like forget about it. Oh, well, the thing is, you want to go find someone, you know, you want to ask these hard questions. You want to find someone who is motivated, who has a lot of things to do in life, want to do in life. And the way that you ask these questions, and honestly, the way you determine this is you figure out how much different things that he talks about that you have no idea about. Because one, when he talks about something that you have no idea about, let's say he wants to do coding or he wants to be, you know, a digital marketer or let's say he wants to, you know, be some cool type of engineer, you know, but you never heard these phrases before. So it's like, okay, that's like a bell. So you got to do your due diligence and go Google exactly what he was talking about after y'all leave. Or if y'all talking through your phone, as soon as he's talking about these topics, you, you Google it, you Google it. Because if you see that the engineer that he's talking about is that he just wants to, you know, wash cars. It's like, oh, okay. Like, you're like, okay, you can probably do something out of it. But it's like, you, you only want to wash cars? Like, okay. Detailing is cool, though. But the idea is if you find someone, you honestly, we know what our standards are. So you want to find someone who meets your standards in multiple categories. And you want to avoid the ones who seem to be on that same standard level. So, to go back through them, first type of man you want to dis, um, avoid is the disrespectful type. We do not tolerate dis disrespect, we will not accept disrespect, and we will not, we just won't accept it. <laughs> I was going to give you like a nice great quote, but you get the idea. No disrespect. You will not settle for the guys who feel that they are entitled to something or that you owe them for doing something they're supposed to do. You're not going to get a cookie for washing the dishes. Wash the dishes. It's not hard. Little things like that. So we're not settling for people who feel entitled. We're also avoiding the ones who are emotionally unavailable. Those people will waste your time because you're going to take a lot of time in trying to convince somebody of something that they aren't really keen to. Kick them. And ultimately, we're going to avoid the non-offer because these are the ones who come into your life but offer no sort of value to you. And remember, we all are about growing. So if you see that person is only trying to stay at level five, as we gave an example, and you're trying to reach to level seven, but you've been on level five for way longer than you expect, and you know what needs to be done. You say, hey, I'll be right back. And you go to level seven. And if you see that they haven't moved yet, then guess what? You keep on progressing and you leave them a little note that says, thanks for that time. I will catch you later. And that's how you leave them.